we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence tonight and pray, Lord, that we may truly honor your presence as to who you are and what you are doing for us through your love and grace, O oh God, and your mercy in this hour, knowing that this is the end of all time because it has been vindicated to us. Men need no longer to search what hour we live in, but we know the hour in which we live, and we know the deep mysteries and secrets of our Lord God, even those which were not known from before the foundation of the world, or at least were not made known in the way that they should be known, so we would have understanding. Increase our understanding tonight, Lord, we pray, and may we have the, the strength within us, Father, and the courtesy and the love to walk in the light as you are in the light and have that fellowship one with another with the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleansing us from all sin. In Jesus' name we pray, man. You may be seated. Now before I uh, start with what I want to go into, I want to just say for those who get the tapes in the um, video cassettes, audio in the video cassettes, that um, <clears throat> I want to thank them specifically because my ministry depends upon their support, not the local church. And they've been very, very good to me over the years, and they come from various places in America, United States, Europe, and also in Africa, Australia, New Zealand. And then also there have been those who have given me personal uh, benefits, and I appreciate that mostly coming from Canada and from England, and some from South Africa, and also from New Zealand and Australia. <clears throat> and I do want to thank them very much for that because it has meant much to me, and I'm sorry that I haven't been able to be here to tape as I would have liked to, but uh, we just have to do whatever we can do, and perhaps not the best way, and maybe not as much as we can do, but we are able to do uh, just a certain amount anyway. So now I want to go in and uh, bring to your attention a few things that are very valuable to us <clears throat> because we have scripture for them. Now you remember back in the days when Israel was established within the land and they were told to go in with the word of God which would uh, give them the uh, reverence of the people round about them uh, which uh, people would have to be those raised up after they had exterminated all the Gibeonites and Midianites and Philistines and whoever else were in the land and, and coming in then, whoever would be there as their neighbors, uh, from that time on, all those others having been exterminated because the Sodomites were in the land, it was a very bad situation, then God said that people would say, what a great word these people have. And you'll notice that that actually, down the road under King David and Solomon took place, with the Queen of Sheba coming and Hiram from the uh, various, uh, and one of the kings and various other kings uh, brought their, their glory into the uh, kingdom of Israel and they knew that God was, was the great king and, and the only God there was and they knew what a great word that Israel had. Then later on in the Babylonian captivity, we find that Nebuchadnezzar was forced to accede to the fact <clears throat> that the God of Israel was the great and only God and rules in the, all the armies in the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> now, at the time, uh, when they went into, into uh, uh, the, the promised land under, under Joshua, the, uh, they never had the stability they should have had because they did not exterminate the enemies of God, <clears throat> the heathen, which they were supposed to have exterminated and not married amongst them, nor given their daughters or their sons in marriage, and neither were they to have many wives. But you notice they, they broke the commandments of God, and at that particular time, uh, everybody was sort of uh, working according to his own understanding of who God was and what God was, in spite of the fact that it wasn't uh, too many years previous to the time that they came out of Egypt with all the signs and wonders of God in their behalf when God revealed himself to them and they worshiped the only true and living God. And that's the time you'll find after Joshua there came judges. And, and there were judges, but after the judges, then after the, uh, because it was uh, what you would call uh, 
diverse groups had grown up with various understandings that drifted from God, yet they were cohesive in the sense that they were still Israelites. And then God raised up the prophet Samuel, <coughs> which began to bring them together, where under a king they could be one nation, truly under God, which they were under David, and uh, although he didn't live a very good life, and then also to a degree under Samuel, and then again they went down into, into heathenism <clears throat> because of what Solomon allowed, which was contrary to the word of the living God. Now, what I'm saying that for, as I've said it before, is that Israel is in exactly the same position today. They're over there in Palestine, and they're fragmented. <clears throat> they simply do not have an understanding of the true and living God, though they profess to. And so, it's a, here's what the little article says, a fragmented society. The elections, the elections remain Israel's greatest obsession. Cracks are appearing in the ranks of parties as candidates for prime minister break away to form their own groupings. Of course, you know, since then, Barack has come into authority, and he's getting a very bad time now, and his government could quite well fall. Alliances are in disarray. Mean, see, there's no unity. Meanwhile, the breach between the religious and secular wings of society is as deep as ever. The seculars who make up the great majority of the population perceive themselves to be besieged by the intensive, unfair, and relentless activity of the men in black. <clears throat> That's your priesthood. See, the ones that are supposed to be leading and doing the service of God, leading in worship, they're leading in anything but the worship of God. The political stage is characterized by constant ebullition, uh, not only because of the breaking off of candidates from the main parties, particularly labor, but also because of the formation of new parties of specific ethnic or religious character. One is Shas, uh, formed to cater to the needs of the aspiration of the Sephardic Jews, another to the Israel Baalah, uh, seemed formed to gather to, in Israel's increasingly large Russian community. At the same time, the scandals and personal dissensions surrounding Netanyahu make it appear many of the Likud members that by accepting peace process, the party has renounced its special ideological character. In fact, looking at the two principal candidates, Netanyahu and, and Barack, a hawkish former general, it's hard to, for observers to see any clear difference between them. The fragmentation of Israel is a result of an earthquake provoked by the Oslo Accords. <clears throat> you see, the Israel was never numbered amongst the nations. And now being numbered amongst the nations, they're being pressured. And it, there again you see the Old Testament right back uh, bringing us to the same position that Israel was way back there and to the position we are as uh, the Gentile Church of God. Once all that was necessary to paper over division in Israel society was to evoke the security question, but now it appears that with the exception of settlers and some extremists, everyone is resigned to the idea of living with a Palestinian state. So the dialogue now concerns what kind of society is the Israelis want. <clears throat> now you see, when Israel had the chance to destroy the Arabs that were bent on destroying them, the Six Day War, I understand America stepped in and said you can't go any further. The same as when Israel and France and Britain took the Suez Canal and, and, and Eisenhower stepped in and said, give it back. So America is a meddler. And if Israel is not getting what she should have, America, a lot of America's doings is bothering Israel, but Israel also is lobbying in America to try to get what it wants. So what I'm trying to show you, there's a religious political state. And Everything in the world has now gone down to politics and religion. <clears throat> Never mind this, any other type of ethnicity. It has nothing to do with it. It is religion. It's just exactly why the Serbs were killing off the Muslims, and now the Muslims are killing off the Serbs. And this is a very bad situation. You've got a very bad situation over there. <clears throat> now, what in your... Uh, what in, is your position toward the conflict between Israel, Islam, and Judaism between the idea of the free market economy and that of social solidarity and between pluralism and division, understanding and a partition into many sectors, asked Labour Member of Parliament Shlomo Benami, by what kind of concrete can uh, this multifaceted society be held together when there is no common enemy at the gates? 
Only the rel religious zealots give replies to these queries, and it is this that worries their adversaries. So <clears throat> you've got <clears throat> a situation then, like as I mentioned before, it's fragmented, and therefore there's only one thing that can happen. Prophets, just like Samuel. The next thing to Israel comes the prophets. And after that comes the king. Because that's what took place back there. And of course, <clears throat> the king now will be the Lord Jesus Christ, the greater son of David upon the throne. So I wanted to bring that to your attention as I did a little bit previously so that you really can see what is going on in Israel, which is the clock. <clears throat> if you want to know the time, watch Israel. If you want to know the condition of the church, of course, you just watch what women are doing. And uh, we're not going to talk about that tonight, though, because that might would be another subject. Now, <clears throat> a while back, we were talking about uh, looking at the various informative things concerning what's going on in the world today in the finances. And once again, we see the financial condition is very, very uh, problematical in the world. <clears throat> and of course, the problem is that the control of money, which isn't even fiduciary, which is fiat, which simply means somebody said, roll the presses, boys, and they roll the presses and uh, there's nothing behind it. Whereas with fiduciary, there is supposed to be something behind it, and there normally is. <clears throat> but even if we did have uh, actually fiduciary currency instead of fiat, uh, I don't know how much good it would really do because you really don't know uh, what is where, if they even have what to be where. You understand what I'm talking about? In other words, there's not a product that is geographically located. And if they say the product is geographically located, how do we know they're not lying about the product? Just like happened many, many years ago now, when Estes under uh, Johnson, a very good friend, had evidently millions of bushels of grain <clears throat> supposed to have in Texas, and they found out he'd sold the grain. And it was no different from what this Italian millionaire had in, uh, in uh, New York. And nothing against the Italians, it happened he's Italian. <clears throat> and uh, he had all this oil that was supposed to be there, it was already sold and gone. So if you had today and said, okay, we have this much gold in Fort Knox, how do you know? Might not have two bits worth. Then if the day came when somebody took the bulldozer, <clears throat> Uh, some great force came and said, okay, let's uncover the gold. Gone. So you see, you had no fiduciary. Actually, you had fiat, which is simply crawl the press. Somebody gave an order, <clears throat> like Greenspan gave the order the other day, crank out $90 billion, $190 billion, put it in the banks in case there's a run on the banks. So all right, with that in mind, I want to read you something here. It says, the concentration of income inside the United States is striking, but it pales in comparison with the concentration worldwide in which the economic system headed by the United States has given rise. Estimates are today that the wealthiest 20% of the world population accounts for 80% of income, while the poorest 20% must make do with 1%. Now remember, uh, we got statistics from a, a woman uh, economist, I think she's a lady, yeah, and she was working for the unions. And at that time, it was said that 30% of the population of the world owned 70% of the wealth. So therefore, if 30% owned 70%, then the other 70% only owned 30%. Then we saw another difference of opinion <clears throat> by statisticians, and they said, no, what it is now, 10% owns 90% of the wealth, and the 90% only owns 10%. Well, here's some more figures, what I just read to you. It says here, 80 86%, 20%, uh, one-fifth of the six billion people and uh, one-fifth of that is only 1,200,000. 
The rest of them got to do with only 20%, so that leaves them with peanuts. <clears throat> the 20% just have 1% out of that. That's the lowest group. Okay, in short, political democracy and the rule of law are our dominant values in the global empire of the United States. The United States is global. Why? Because still over 70% of all the world commerce is done by American money and it's all fiat. There's no gold behind it. It's not fiduciary. It's not legal tender. It's highly illegal, highly suspect. Now at the same time, let's be very careful to understand an angel of God did not come down out of heaven and say gold is the standard. You understand years ago the Indians used clamshells. And you could use hairpins, bobby pins. <coughs> you could use grapefruit seed if you thought that would work. What it is, it's merely a matter of tender in order to get rid of barter, which does not really work. But at the same time, remember, whatever is printed is supposed to have value behind it so you can get it when you want it. That's why you don't have a dollar bill left in America that says you can give this back to the government and they'll give you one dollar in silver. The last time you could get that was what, 30 years ago? <coughs> Roughly 30 years ago. So you see, what you're looking at is a paper money system. And I'm not saying that's bad if you could make it work and understand that the government should control it instead of the banks. So they put the money out when there's enough goods to buy, drop the money in when there are no goods to buy, so you keep down inflation. Now Greenspan is raising the rates on this phony money that the banks are controlling. Because nobody but banks control the money, and don't you try to tell me different because I'll show you by facts and figures you are 100% wrong. The Federal Reserve is merely a tool for the banks. <clears throat> and what do the banks do? They get the money, they lend it out, they actually don't even own it when it comes right down to it. And then it's all turned back on the taxpayer. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. The global system is going to break one of these days. I don't know when, because there is nothing behind it. It's a complete mess because America doesn't have it. Now see, now watch, everything has gone global. See, I told you about the, the euro dollar. It's not going to get off the ground. If it does, it's going to play some little dinky thing somewhere. God knows and who cares. <clears throat> it's not going to. You have a, listen, here's what's wrong in the world. People don't believe a vindicated prophet. That's right. They don't believe that God came down, manifested himself in human flesh, eyeballed us, and said, this is what it is. And the Jews have the paper and Rome has the gold. And so when the bubble breaks, who's going to issue fiduciary? Rome. Now, years ago, it's known that even Israel uses the lira. Why? Don't ask me. It's just something that I read, and it's true, but who knows? In short, political democracy and the rule of law are the dominant values in the global empire of the United States. And there is no point in denying this great contribution to global civilization. But the other side of the system, presided over by the United States, is the brutally unfair distribution of wealth in this world. The very few have increasingly more, but all too many have very little and will have proportionally even less in the future because from now, from now there is nothing to stop this dynamic fundamental injustice. <clears throat> and if you, if you read your papers, <clears throat> you're going to find that the IMF that lent the money to the poor nations now wants it back on their conditions that they will do exactly what they want them to do economically, even though it's going to destroy people and cause millions of people to die and starve. And that's your position right today, and that's America. And remember, America had its last chance to turn to God in 1956. <clears throat> now, for 43 solid years, how many more years is it going to take before America is exposed for exactly what it is? 
a system of harlotry, that's all, completely run by the devil and his, and his cohorts. So your system, just trying to bring you up to date on your system to let you know what's going on. <clears throat> now, this is the same thing, so I won't have to worry about it, except to say here, this, fell, this man here who is an economist, by reason of the fact that he maybe doesn't, hasn't gone to Harvard, and sets himself as an economist, but he's sure a student of the money system. And he says here, why would any thinking person think that our politicians and or central bankers have any more brains or integrity of those in the past? And what was in the past? For hundreds and hundreds of years, fiat money, which means there's nothing behind it, except goodwill. That you take it, and the next guy takes it, and the next guy takes it, the next guy takes it, and suddenly there's nothing to take. Boom. <clears throat> it's gone. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of years have proved that it won't work. And it says, indeed, they have already succumbed to the temptation since 1950. Our dollar has lost more than 90% of its purchasing power. Why does anyone believe that the last 10% is sacrosanct and will not disappear as well? Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm just trying to show you, look, events are coming right to the end. <clears throat> They've come right to the end of the trail. When you get down to 10%, hey, how would you like to settle right today? The boss took you into more money and said, hey, too bad, you're going to get 10% of what you used to get. Now, some of you make fairly decent wages, but let's just say for one minute that everybody here made $1,000 a week. How would you like to be suddenly brought down to $100 a week? Huh? Well, that's where you are, whether you know it or not. <clears throat> it's been going down. I've compared prices myself and said, somebody's nuts, and I know I'm not nuts. Because I remember prices 30 years back. I remember them 40 years back. And you get back to 1950, that's 50 years, and I'm 85, and I still remember prices back in 1950. Oh, yeah, I do. I remember I bought a, a, a nice Buick for $1,200 in 1953. Same cost for $35,000 today for maybe $40,000. <clears> back in, not as a bike in 19, what, about 1956, I bought a, uh, what do you call them, um, Oldsmobile uh, 88, one of the best cars I ever owned. I think I paid $1,300 for it. Yeah. Just look around. You're going to find that, <clears throat> that what Brother Branham said is true. The money system is going to go. And when it goes, there's going to be half to somebody controlling everything so that you can't buy or sell unless you're in his camp. Now, remember we saw <clears throat> that anywhere from 10% to 20% own 90%. Well, all they got is a bubble that's going to break. Now, Brother Branham categorically said that Castro did right. He called in the money. America will not do it because it's global. America is no longer national. America is global. And the ramifications are very, very desperate because America <clears throat> has a great problem. I, I'm not against NAFTA for one minute. I realize the West must do what it's supposed to do, and I realize we're in a global system. But here's a peculiar thing. How come Germany and Japan are manufacturing those things that we need in our high-tech industry for big wages at big prices, and we're buying them from them instead of manufacturing here at home where it belongs? You tell me. We're not doing one thing for the Mexicans or the poor guys anyplace else because Japan is high-tech with good wages and so is Germany. Now that's absolutely... You want to get my magazine on in economics? I'll be glad to lend it to you. The downfall of America. <clears throat> so we're at a nice place today. We're in a popcorn toaster. Shaking over the hot coals, and she's going to pop. Amen. And you know something? Don't feel bad. 
One day, and I'm closer to death perhaps than anybody here, maybe, I don't know, because some of you could be worse shape than I am, I could live to be 100, you could pop off at 55 or 60. <clears throat> I got pretty tough genes. They're not as tough as John's, but they're tough, <laughs> tough as genes anyway. And, and uh, I, you know, I could live a long time, you could live a long time, we don't know. But here's the thing, we're gonna die. Now, when you die, you can't help it. You are in the hands of God to do what he jolly well wants to do with you. And if you're born again, you couldn't be in a better condition if you tried. Then why worry about the squeeze coming down and the bubble popping? Live it. Because as Paul said, now I'm going to read it to you. Because I'm going to tell you, people read the, 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 the eight chapter Romans the way they read the 91st Psalm, which means all these things can happen, but ain't going to happen to us. Hogwash, it's not going to happen to you. Listen, <clears throat> who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, that's not spiritual, although it can be, or peril, or sword, remember the last days perilous times come, as it's written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long, that's 35th verse in Romans 8, and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am absolutely entirely 100% persuaded. I'm committed to this. This is live, die, sink, or swim. Here it is right here. Then neither death, sink, life, swim, nor angels, nor principalities, that's your Roman Catholic Church and all governments and Protestants, nor powers, things present, things to come, height nor depth, no creature, nothing created, <clears throat> is able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, the baptism with the Holy Ghost is your 100% assurance, period. <clears throat> so don't feel bad about it. Now, we're going to go on to more spiritual things. You know, <clears throat> concerning the presence which I have taken to you step by step through the Scripture and told you that I knew absolutely that Matthew 24 was related to 2 Peter. <clears throat> I guess it's, oh, it's the third chapter. I think it is. I never know a second, third chapter. What is the difference? Except I'll look it up for you. It's over here, and it's, it's the third chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> Turk talking about the presence, and then in Acts, uh, where they're still talking about the presence, which has to do with the kingdom of God on earth, which is the millennium. <clears throat> Based on Moses, who said, we will not go up if you don't go with us. In other words, the millennial establishment was a theocracy, which is the only decent form of government there is. Now, I know Plato brought out that the, most that the best form of government is benevolent dictatorship, but he would have ended up with a Hitler and all the rest of them because he was not smart, as people like to think he was. He was a theorist. And dictatorship <clears throat> is not the answer. It is <clears throat> uh, a theocratic empire with God at the head and the Lord Jesus Christ the Lamb being the actual one sitting on the throne because you can't see God. But you can in the form of the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we may talk a bit about that tonight. <clears throat> but anyway, we were looking at that and we saw that the actual word proves your presence, God being there, <clears throat> like here's Israel, ready to come out from persecution and oppression, out from under Pastor Pharaoh, and Brother Branham never used that just for the fun of it. It's an actual truth of the matter. 
because he was without a doubt the head of all religions and the, <clears throat> as the king and the religious influence was all through there. You can see it by Janus and Jambers and their worship. When God brought them out, was ready to bring them out, <clears throat> Moses was walking <clears throat> down the road and he passed by a bush. I'll ask you a question. Was God in that bush before Moses got there? Well, if you said he wasn't there before Moses got there, I would have to have your head examined because I know one thing, you, you don't have enough brains to get them baptized with the Holy Ghost. God was already there waiting for Moses to come back. <clears throat> and Moses saw the bush burning and not being destroyed, and he began to approach. And God said, hey, just a minute. Don't come one step further till you take your shoes off because you are on holy ground. I am the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <clears throat> and he revealed himself. And this is what the presence was all about, was to take them into uh, Canaan land, the promised land, <clears throat> where they would be with him <clears throat> under the ideal conditions that God wanted for them. <laughs> Now, the same thing is what they were bringing to Jesus in Matthew 24 <clears throat> and said, what is the sign of your presence, which is in pure English, what is the sign of the setting up of the messianic kingdom? Now, we believe you're a Messiah. Now, what is there that is necessary now so that we can enter in to this kingdom. And he said, it's a long way down the road. <clears throat> now after the resurrection, they again said, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said, it's in the Father's hands. And he left them with that, and also the revelation <clears> of <throat> when that kingdom would come. Now, you can't get away from the fact that it's going to take God to get his people out of the ground, to change the people here, and lead them into the millennium. And that's what the presence is all about. <clears throat> now, you know that I teach I'm not a prophet. And I have to take everything back to the word that Brother Branham gives. So I wait upon the Lord without actually waiting on the Lord, which means that I don't go to my Bible, and I don't go to praying and fasting, and I don't go to ruminating. I just leave it with God. When he's ready to tell me, he will tell me what it is. <clears throat> so suddenly, I find myself out of nowhere, without even contemplating, without even thinking, and that's how it comes. Suddenly, I know what the Bible says, and I can place it. And I placed it, actually, <clears throat> from Moses saying to God, if your presence go not with us, then we will not go up. And that was the truth, if God didn't do it. And Brother Branham preached that Joshua today is the Holy Spirit who will lead us into the kingdom. Now, as I went over the third exodus with you, <clears throat> and we taught upon it, Brother Branham said the identical thing. But, you see, I'm not one to catch things the way a lot of people catch things. But when I do get it, I got it because I go right to the Word, and everything has got to be with this Word, or I'm not interested, because, and I'm not, not saying I'm not interested, it, Brother Branham has to be 100% with this Word. Now, here's what he said in the third Exodus. Now, I want you to notice this same pillar of fire is leading the people again to a promised land, the millennium, where we found under inspiration a sixth seal that's never been taught before, how the earth has to be purified for the millennium, the pillar of fire is leading them to a millennium. And notice the pillar of fire that led Israel out of, from the bondage in that exodus. The pillar of fire under the leadership of God, God was the fire, and the pillar of fire only anointed the prophet. The pillar of fire was to stand as a heavenly witness that Moses was called out. Now, Brother Branham is telling you right there, I was called out exactly as Moses, 
the same pillar of fire that gave the, <clears throat> and remember the prophet Moses did not lead them to the promised land, no way, shape, and form. It was God that did it, and he said the same pillar of fire is going to do it. And I took it back to scripture all the way to show you, and Brother Branham had already said it. So therefore you will notice <clears throat> that everything that Brother Branham said is with the word. And when you take it to the word, you find everything in one accord and in a great perfection which you could not find before. Then he says, you remember Dathan and, and Coram Byron then said, well, we ought to start an organization. Moses takes too much upon yourself. You, you try to say you're the only holy one among us. All the congregation of the Lord is holy. <clears throat> How can you take this upon yourself? <clears throat> now, you got the same thing right today. Oh, God's in his church. We all got him. Not a clue to the presence. And the reason there isn't a clue is because they don't see vindication. Now, you wonder why I preached vindication in the last 33 years as strong as I have? <clears throat> why? Because Brother Branham did. Why should I be different? He's the, he's the teacher. I'm the pupil. And if I'm teaching you here, then why should you do any different? And if you do, you're wrong. I can tell you right now, you're going to be like other people. You're going to walk off because they are, well, ask them to leave maybe under certain conditions. But you are going to find this. They do not believe in vindication. They say they do, but they don't. Because the minute that you believe in vindication, you say, who vindicated him? To what end was he vindicated? What is he supposed to do with his vindication? They go right off the bat. <clears throat> And they're doing it, and they're going to keep doing it, and I won't name names because you think I might name a name. You're entirely wrong. I wouldn't name a name that you wouldn't even guess. Doesn't believe in vindication. He says, he, she says, they say, uh-uh. They don't. Because when you believe, you say, this is the truth. This is the revealed word of God. I have nothing to do but shut up and sit down. I am at the table of the Lord, spiritual food in due season, to get me ready for the rapture. <clears throat> because that's why he is here, to take us into the millennium. <clears throat> now, that's the truth of it. Now, it, this is what I wanted to say tonight. Now, I'm going to go from here into Godhead. <clears throat> this is the main thrust tonight, and how far we get. I don't know. I just may lay the groundwork so that we can go on, and I likely will, tomorrow morning. All right. Now, let's bow our heads for a second. Heavenly Father, as we switch the tenor of our thoughts in going directly to what the prophet taught, outlined here in your word and knowing it to be the truth, absolutely the truth, we ask you to help us to see this as we've never seen it before, to your glory and honor, and yet to our eternal good, because this is the way it must be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Brother Branham went to John 1 and 1. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word. In other words, whatever that Word was, already was. Or there wouldn't have been a beginning. <clears throat> so whatever was, was. In the beginning, now it tells you what was in the beginning when something started. What started it? The Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now the interpolation is there by explanation, and the Word was with God, and I'm sorry it's even in there. But I can't change the Bible. <clears throat> but I can look at it and find out what it means, because if it weren't important, and part of the living Word today, it wouldn't be in there. The, but you'll notice what it is. In the beginning was the Word, and the, what was the Word? The Word was God. <clears throat> so when it says, with God, the Word was with God, you have to know that there is a union here, and that there is that which is under the actual Godhead, himself and yet being a part of him <clears throat> because it says was with God and was God. <clears throat> now 
Now, this is a juicy verse for the Trinitarians. But Brother Branham demanded of us to clearly recognize and keep in mind that the end time, that this is the only age in 6,000 years <clears throat> that is spoken of as perilous times. And the perilous times have everything to do with this verse, which I will show you as we go along. <clears throat> now, in 2 Timothy, we're going to read about these perilous times. <clears throat> now, the third chapter says, and know this. This is something you absolutely have to know. This is knowledge. <clears throat> that at the last days, in the last days, perilous times shall come. And then Brother Branham said, this is the only time the scripture talks of perilous times. <clears throat> at least in this way. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, <clears throat> lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In other words, the agape love that's reserved for God, God doesn't get it. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lusts, ever learning and ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth. <clears throat> now Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so did these men also resist the truth. Well, where's Moses? If Janus and Jambres is out there, where's Moses? You know you are talking about Janus and Jambres and Moses unless, and talk about Janus and Jambres being here resisting truth unless you got a Moses with the truth. I mean, that's logical. Otherwise, this is just a crock. You don't have to worry me <coughs> about <coughs> a tidal wave coming into Ohio. Forget it. No tidal waves come into America, to Ohio. Or would it? No way. So you don't warn me about Janus and Jambers <coughs> resisting truth unless there's a Moses somewhere. Because Janus and Jambers would be the truth if there isn't a Moses. <coughs> because they pulled a lot of rabbits out of the hat, so to speak. All right. So do these also resist the truth. Who resists the truth? Those that come against Moses. Those that come against somebody that's not Moses at the end time. And who's supposed to be here at the end time if anybody's supposed to be at the end time? The only person you can find at the end time is Elijah. And if you don't believe he comes to the Gentiles, he's still got to come to the Jews. Because he's the one in Malachi. <clears throat> so you got a little problem here. And that is the people all believe you got Janus and Jambres, and oh boy, they'll tell you who they are, hallelujah, because they're the Moseses. Hogwash. Janus and Jambres got more vindication than those birds have. <clears throat> like the Janus and Jambres are going running like little pot bellied chili running around with nothing at all except blah, 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 big mouth. They're all running. Oh, they're not all running. You've got a few of them running, and it makes me so sick. It's stupid to even talk about it. Men of corrupt minds, reprobates concerning the truth. <clears throat> now, they don't have the Holy Ghost because you're reprobate unless you do have the Holy Ghost. That's the Bible. Except you have the Spirit of Christ, you're none of his, you're reprobate. <clears throat> 
These people don't have their brains baptized with the Holy Ghost. They just think to do. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as also was theirs. What does it mean by that? The believer is going to escape the Egyptians and the Janus and Jambers and the Pharaohs. And they're going to be destroyed in the crossing over. Because in three and a half years, the saints will be up there and crossing over. Come and back. <clears throat> and they'll be destroyed. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, and purpose, and faith, and long suffering, charity, and patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them the Lord delivered me, out of all of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Of course, going to Swede's going to come down. But watch, evil men sh and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. <clears> hey, <throat> they're deceiving people and they in turn are being deceived. A bunch of thieves getting together and they're all picking each other's pockets. Well, they asked for it. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. How? Because Paul said so. Hogwash. Paul was vindicated. Huh? Vindication, vindication, vindication. Let's walk around the room shouting vindication to give these dead birds up here that think we're dead something to talk about. No, they won't talk about William Brandon vindicated. No, no. You think I'm lying to you? Come on, just challenge me. We'll get their tapes and find out. Thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them. Paul said, let me tell you, son, I'm vindicated just like Moses. The same pillar of fire <clears throat> that gave Moses the word of God to bring them into the kingdom of God. I stand right there with Moses and William Branham said the same thing. How many really believe it? What, when the squeaks come down, will you believe it? When the promise seems a little far off, will you believe it? When all the emotions have died up within you, will you still believe it? When you're naked, will you still believe it? <clears throat> or if you come to the place where you say, I ain't got nothing to hang on but this. And it's live, die, sink, or swim. But here's where I am. Because the Bible says everything's going to get shaken down but God himself. <coughs> he will endure. The creator who is the maintainer will allow everything in due order and what he wants in his own way to be shaken down. And then the thing is, like Job, will you see him? Or will you say, I guess we made a mistake? And be like a man I know literally on his deathbed who said in Canada, no, Brother Branham wasn't that one to come. And all he could do was enjoy hearing A.A. A. Allen's tapes and preach like a Pentecostal. And you can never preach the message when you hear a man that can't preach the message. You're dead along with him because he's dead and leading you to death. And Brother Branham said a preacher that doesn't preach doctrine ought not to be preaching. And Brother Branham also said the New Testament is full of the pillar of fire leading you to the millennium. <clears throat> yeah, I know people don't like my kind of preaching, but I do because this is what saves my soul. Thou hast been from whom, knowing of whom, thou hast learned. 
And Paul said, I'll take the challenge against any Janus and Jambers or anybody living. And as Brother Branham said, you couldn't hide if you tried. And he said, bring your Bibles and stand up here beside me. And if they'd have come up, they'd have fallen down dead and been carried out like at the Red, so the Red Sea overcame the chariots of the horsemen <clears throat> and the children of the devil. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Here's a young fellow brought up in the truth. Didn't know anything but Paul's teaching. Didn't know anything but vindication. Listen, you young people, stick with it and flee youthful lusts. If you're thinking of messing with drink, cigarettes, drugs, women, cut it out. I'll be a witness against you. Because I didn't do it. You don't have to either. Now, William Branham didn't do it. And some of you got parents that never did it. You may be getting your last call tonight. You've been brought up on vindication. Where do you think you're going from this point but to destruction? Because get this flat, if you change, you can't come back. Because there's no repentance. Hebrews 6. You saw Brother Baal, I never will leave the word. I'm going to be like David. Yeah? Let's see what happens to you. Let's see what happens to you. Let's keep reading. You from a child. <clears throat> I heard Brother Branham when I was 36 years old. 1953, I was 39 years old when I met him. I began listening. From the age of 36, I couldn't hear him till I met him. But I knew I was to listen to him. How fortunate you kids are to be brought up under a ministry even as poor as mine that directs you to vindication, which means there is no failure absolutely this is it. Now let me get this flat. I'm not trying to scare you into heaven because that's a lot of, that's a bunk and junk. If you're not elected, you'll never get it. But remember, you have to be of those in my understanding that are elected. Otherwise, why are you sitting under the message? Will you be bride or foodies virgin? <clears throat> or perchance are you reprobate just sitting here? I don't know on the foundation of God stand the servant to see the Lord and know with them which are his. I don't and I don't pretend to. But I know one thing, the evidence of being an elect child of God is to stand with William Branham vindicated like Moses with the presence of God, the pillar of fire here. And we're learning every word and believing because it is vindicated. And I'm not preaching morals, I'm preaching gospel. Amen. I'm not for the defense of morals. If you are born again, you will be moral. My God, what are you being saved from? You always were saved if you're a child of God. It's the flesh. And if you're risen from the dead, from the death of sins, you will be walking in the light. <clears throat> you won't be perfect. But you won't be trying to run after every ill star under God's high heaven. From a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures were able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Then what comes? Reproof. Reproof does not come ahead of doctrine because what does it matter if I correct you if you don't have the truth? If you read the Koran, I'm told, you could be a very fine person. And you read the Bible, you can be a very fine person. 
But there's nobody more illegitimate to the Koran than the Muslims and to the Bible than the Christians. Because they don't have the doctrine. What a mess the world's in. For reproof, for correction. Amen. Doctrine comes first. <clears throat> for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect. That's complete. That's this end time group especially. Thoroughly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge thee therefore be God, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing <clears throat> and his kingdom. At his appearing and his kingdom. You put them together. So at the time of his, of his appearing <clears throat> comes the kingdom. And Brother Branham said there's two different words. One's appearing and one's coming and they're two different words and they are. And the appearing is either Epiphania or the Phanero. So now we're at the time he says appearing now. So the manifestation in his brightness is going on now. And the proof of who he is is going on now. So that Paul says at the end time what he had is going to come again. <clears throat> And that's what he said in Ephesians. <clears throat> and that's what the vindicated prophet said, Ephesus must come again, or the Ephesian age must come again, because that's where it started. Alpha has to be Omega. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Watch the doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And Peter tells them, watch out at the end time, not for prophets, but teachers. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. People coming along, a bunch of gas bags, telling them things that aren't true and lying about ministries they don't have. And that started way back under Brother Branagh's ministry when these Voice of Healing guys ran around claiming things they didn't have. <clears throat> What's that, 120 minutes gone by? 55 minutes. Huh? 55 minutes. 55. Well, we'll go a little further. And watch thou in all things, end your afflictions, do the work and advance us, make full proof of thy ministry, for I'm now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also them also that love his appearing. <clears throat> That's the appearing, not the coming. And remember Brother Branham, when he talked about the cloud with the face in it, he said, that one was the judge, and he talked about the supreme deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, and right away they thought he was talking about the Lamb. Jesus is not deity. Jesus is not deity. He is not God. So you better get your doctrine straight. <clears throat> Just hold that because we'll be needing these thoughts. <clears throat> now, do thy diligence to come shortly to me. Now, I want to take you to <clears throat> the book of Romans because it tells you here, men should be lovers of their own self, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers, and so on. <clears throat> now, Paul says in Romans 1 and 18, which by the way, <clears throat> is banned from being read in over the broadcasting systems in Britain <clears throat> because it's too rough on these wonderful gays. These illegitimate people that are destroying the world, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about them tonight. 
That's why tomorrow we'll just, we're getting a nice groundwork for tomorrow morning. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold back the truth. Doesn't say hold the truth. It hold back the truth in unrighteousness, which means they're doing the same thing that Satan did, perverting the word of God and thereby holding back the truth. Because that which may be known of God, that's Theos, God himself, deity, <clears throat> is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, or deity. <clears throat> because that's what it's all about, is deity. So that they are without excuse. <clears throat> because that when they knew God and had. Now Paul wrote this. The same one that wrote 2 Timothy. There is no way that Paul could write this scripture here and leave out vindication when he put vindication in Timothy. <clears throat> so there would have to be a vindication. God appearing, manifesting himself, proving himself, declaring himself, actually uniting himself with the people as their God before they could ever turn him down because how can you turn somebody down that isn't there to be turned down? How can you turn down somebody who hasn't declared himself without him giving you the knowledge to turn down? How can you turn down or pervert anything, pervert it, unless it is there to be perverted? All right, answer me. You can't do it. <clears throat> if I were to suddenly turn a fire hose on you and then laugh and say, ha, 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 you should have been warned or should have known I'd turn a fire hose on you. How would you know unless I told you? How would you know to wear <clears throat> some waterproof garments? How asinine how ridiculous and blasphemous to anybody to even suggest that these words are written without the background of vindication and presence. The same prophet that wrote this wrote <coughs> Second Timothy, the third chapter and the fourth chapter. Now let's keep reading. Now watch, <laughs> this is about what? Godhead, deity, the one and true God, right? What well, is? <clears throat> the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. It has been and will be. When you turn down. God himself. You say, how can I, do I turn down God himself? When you turn down what God said about how he reveals himself to you and what he himself is all about in the way that he wishes to communicate and you say, well, I don't want that. Now you are stuck here. You are one of those. Now watch. Because when they knew God, when they knew God, when they knew him, not know about him, not have some thoughts in their minds that they've conjured up, but they literally knew that it was God. Not just from nature, that lets you know there is a God. But evidently this God has spoken to them either face to face or through somebody or some way whereby he communicated himself to them that they knew this was God. Now you say, Brother Vail, what if they didn't want to believe it was God? Well, that shows your serpency just like Cain 
although he did admit there was God. You're even worse than Cain. <clears throat> you understand what I'm trying to show you here? Vindication. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their reasonings. That's imaginations. They made their own images up. And their foolish heart was darkened. Notice it's a collective heart. There and was, and heart is singular. They're condemned as one person. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. <clears throat> Now, what if you make Jesus a man God? You say, well, Brother Vale, uh, he didn't corrupt. That's because the Bible says, thou wilt not let thy Holy One corrupt. <clears throat> what if you make him God? He's just a man. He's the Son of God. He's the first begotten of God, uniquely born. You and I are not so uniquely born, but we are also children of God. Yeah. Passed down through human bodies. What else would you expect anyway? To have anything else would be stupid. <clears throat> then they went to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And they still do that in India and Africa and various parts of the world, the jungles and what have you. Wherefore God gave them up to the uncleanness. <clears throat> now, what we have here is a perfect picture setting for 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Because it says through, the uncle through their lusts of their heart, uncleanness. And that tells you, and it tells you in 2 Timothy, the very same thing, homosexuality. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. <clears throat> Sex became more important than God. Number one, they turned down God. You can be like David, turn down the voice of God and be a sex instrument and pay for it. And remember, he went down in ignoble history for doing what he did. He knew he shouldn't covet his neighbor's wife. He knew he shouldn't commit adultery. He actually literally raped her. What it pretty well amounted to. Yep, then thou shalt not kill, kill her husband. You want a life of a mess? Or do you want to be able to stand up in the end time like the Apostle Paul and the saints of old and say, look, I believe God and I stood with him as he stood for me. <clears throat> it's necessary to know that. Because to turn down the everlasting rewards that we get by sowing righteously in order to reap righteously is a condition of folly. And I've tried to teach you, young and old here, the greatest thing in life is to sow and to reap. And there's only one sure way to get the good results is to sow for God. That's why I got one of the best wife in the world. I went right to God. And I didn't say, Lord, I'm a fine man. I need a nice wife. I said, Lord, you know what kind of a guy I am in the marrying kind. If you don't give me a good wife, I'll mess up sure as you're alive and I'm alive. And he gave me the best wife in the world. <clears throat> But you got to mean it. You got to turn down the wenches that are looking at you. And if you think they're not out there hot on your trail, you better read the book of Proverbs. You'll find something you never thought before. You'll find that you're, maybe even your own parents have told you a lie. Yeah. Hoping that somehow the lie would get your. The lie will only condemn you, young boys and young girls. Get the truth and get it right. Yeah, get away from that stuff. <clears throat> It'll pay off to serve God. <clears throat> you bet it does. Now listen, watch. Who changed the truth of God <clears throat> into a lie. We are talking about the one and only true God 
we are talking about Godhead, which in plain English is deity, D-E-I-T-Y, capitals all the way through. <clears throat> Jehovah Elohim, <clears throat> not his son. Eh? And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Now, for this cause, God gave them over to vile affections. <clears throat> Homosexuality is now given over to vileness. Pedophiles, molesters, swaggers with their fetishes. If you young people aren't aware of those things, get a dictionary and begin looking them up. You're not babies anymore. And you're confronted now in age five and six, what I wasn't confronted with when I was 15 years old. Now I'm going to tell you something. Without God, no man or woman's going to stand. And you're going to see what's going to happen down the road. Now watch. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. <clears throat> Child bearings down the road then, it's down, down the drain. And likewise also the men have leaving the natural use of women, or the woman turned, burned in their own lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. <clears throat> now, and even as they did not like, like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate minds to do those things which are not convenient. <clears throat> so it's telling you right here, turning from the true and living God to idolatry. And Trinitarianism is idolatry. And oneness is the same. Because remember, the child is the husband of the mother. That's Nimrod. <clears throat> Semiramis. The Babylonian dogma which must have come out of Egypt previously. <clears throat> now, they did not like to retain God in, in their knowledge, <clears throat> which means that God gave them thorough knowledge concerning himself. So God turns them over to a reprobate mind, it's completely godless, to do those things which are not convenient. <clears throat> now, I'm showing you a progression here. And the progression is this. When Eve turned from God, she went to perverted, diabolical sex. And I don't care how close he was to a man. And I don't care how well he taught her the mechanics and all the thrills and everything else that go with it. Because that's where sexual knowledge came from. She did a perverted, horrible act with an animal. Well, what about it? So, Brother Vail, I don't believe that. You don't believe vindication then, do you? You don't even believe the Bible. Where the Jews said, we be not born of fornication. And the only fornication there could be, because they traced themselves back to Abraham, who traced him back to Adam. The only fornication there could have been with Eve. And who was there to fornicate with her if Adam was the only man? Serpent seed. And Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. <clears throat> now, listen to me carefully. Homosexuality. Homosexuality in both the male and the female. Lesbianism, homosexuality. Is what came absolutely from turning away from God. Now listen, here's their chronology. After the homosexuals <clears throat> become dominant. And this is a wide spectrum. And Brother Branham brought it to our attention as Abraham stood there with God separated 
Lot was down there in Sodom with the Sodomites, <clears throat> with the two main angels. <clears throat> and remember, he said the angels were Billy Graham and Oral Roberts. And if Oral Roberts was the wrong vine, what was Billy Graham? <clears throat> so, sodomy is on the increase, homosexuality, lesbianism. Now, this is a chronology, watch. From this point on, the homosexuals and the rest of their crowd are filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, like a cancer, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, they're traitors, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, the rappers with their songs, let's rape her and kill her, let's listen to her scream, all the vile, filthy things. You get what I'm telling you? What am I talking about? C-H-R-O-N. Chronology. O-L-O-G-Y. I'm talking about sequence. I'm talking about how it all happens. Now listen, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now listen to me, 90% of the American public believes in God. 90%. But you can't teach God in the schools. You can't teach prayer. Huh? America the beautiful. I'm talking about you, filled with all unrighteousness from your homosexuals and you allowing the homosexuals. Now, this Miss Wiseman, and you know what? I'm proud of the blacks. The black preacher stood up against those hypocrites and louse-bound heathen in Dayton and said, we are not going to allow Dayton to have a clause about protecting the homosexuals, though there's some minority. That's a lifestyle. Then why then let's protect then the vegetarians and let's protect the animal rights people. Let's have a separate law for them. Hogwash. There's a law that says thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not assault, thou shalt not do so and so. But they want a special law. And everybody says, hallelujah, let's give them a special law. <clears throat> now, ask you a question. Can we paint a filthier picture of people? No. What happened in the garden? Sex. Filth. Animals. What happened the next thing? They walked out and they saw the four rivers that showed you life goes down the waterway, commerce, civilization travels with the water, and then there was gold and silver and delium and precious stones. What was the thing you saw? Sex and money. What is Satan's kingdom? Sex and money. Now, all the people down here have sex. 90% of them. Ribal, rotten filth. Well, come on, read your papers. <clears throat> Child abusers, everything rotten. And the upper crust has the money. And those with all the money, what are they doing? You can't pick up one magazine without sex. You can't pick up one health issue of a magazine without telling all the joys a man can have beating certain products and it'd be sexy forever. And I didn't get the magazine for that. I got it to help me in some other ways. You can't buy a refrigerator without sex. <clears throat> so the hoi polloi, the people down here, the little guy, He's enamored and fully controlled by sex, and the other guys have money and they have better sex. Or they think they do. <clears throat> now listen to me. They're all worthy of death because they're condoning it. 
When Billy Graham said concerning the rapists, let's castrate him, they're ready to take Billy Graham out and crucify him. <clears throat> when I was a kid, the death penalty still went. If you raped a woman, you got killed for it. Today it's, oh well, hmm. Why? Because the police and the judges are doing it. The upper, upper crust are doing it too, if you call it. Upper crust are just a bunch of crumbs gathered together, bound together by dough. I guess that's what they said, and that's the truth. <clears throat> now listen, what it says here, they that commit these things are worthy of death, and not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The Roman Catholic priesthood. I've known this. We've got a little article through Gerald on the line. The priests are getting AIDS to the extent it's become exponential. <clears throat> now, it says here, because they did this, they received the recompense of the error which was me. <clears throat> now, who gets blamed for HIV? A little green monkey, don't you see, who ate bananas in the tree? He's the one who gets blamed for HIV, but not you and me, not you and me. That was kind of cute poetry, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm sarcastic. You bet I'm sarcastic. It never came from little green monkeys. Talk about stupid. <clears throat> it came from doing this. Now, let's just take a little peek at statistics. And statistics always burn me up because there's a bunch of liars. And now, first of all, I read a little tiny bit in the paper, and it says Sub-Saharan, which is South Africa, there's 13 million orphans whose parents have died from AIDS. <clears throat> okay, so what happens? Newsweek writes 10 million. Oh, yeah, let's cut it down. Oh, yeah, 10 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> let's start with 10 million. All right, now here's a guy, and he's a French-Canadian, a very handsome young man, and he is a steward on an airplane. And he goes to Europe, and he picks up AIDS. And it's known that he infected 220 people. <clears throat> known. Now, when you see one rat in the daylight, I'm told there's 40 more you'll see at night. When you see a cockroach running across the table in daylight, there's a million more in the woodwork. <clears throat> so do you think I'm going to believe 200? Well, I could just to be nice. Now, here's a black man. His name is Williams in New York. And he gives the girls drugs in a high school, and he, and he has 100 females <clears throat> in sexual intercourse, and he has AIDS, and he gives them drugs. Well, now, they took a poll. Now, I'm getting very raunchy, but you're going to have to forgive me. They took a poll, and they questioned all the men, and said, how many female partners have you had? And I think they lied, but they said 20. <coughs> I really don't believe it. I think that's high school juvenile adolescent boasting. But I could be wrong. So I'm going to cut it down to just say five. Now, if this guy had 100 young girls on dope, and what was there, 13 girls at least in one year got pregnant down here at Graham High, how many didn't get? I'm getting, listen, we're getting down to what the Bible talked about. And it says HIV comes from this. <clears throat> okay. So if this guy here got 200, one man got 200? And this guy got 100? Are they case histories by themselves so that they are such great proliferators of HIV or AIDS that they shine as masters of one of a thousand. No, this is common. This is widespread. <clears throat> so, okay. So, you got 220 here. 
So these two, so this, they got there, they five each, you got 1,100. Now this 1,100 moves out, you got 5,500. Not to mention the women coming in, where you're going to have at least 600 more here, and another 2,500 here. So, so very shortly you'll have 8,000 for this one guy here, and it, the figures prove it becomes exponential. <clears throat> In fact, I gave you the figures once, but I lost them concerning the fact if you have engaged in illicit intercourse, it is quite apt that you are the 100th or 200th or 300th person in the chain. Yep. Ooh, man. Exponential. <clears throat> now, let's go back to 10 million up here. These are orphans. Their parents already had AIDS and they're dead. How many did their parents, especially the males, infect? Right. We don't know. <clears throat> but in South Africa and Johannesburg, <clears throat> where they go down deep in the mines, which are two miles down, the heat is so terrible, and women are not there, so the men are all in bunks. They sleep out there in bunks. And so you have homosexuality, <clears throat> and you have AIDS rampant. So all right, let's say here, we've got these 10 million, and let's say, just to be polite, we're going to have 6 million <clears throat> that are growing up, and get the magazine, and you will see what's happening in the magazine, actual pictures of where they are talking to the young boys, these orphans and young ones with HIV, and they're showing them how to protect themselves. Great. Just what the Bible said. They take pleasure in doing it, and they take pleasure in passing it all around, and everybody's very happy with AIDS. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's say we got, so we have these 6 million down here, out of the 10 million. Now, the little kids can't work, so they're starving and dying. The older ones, especially the girls, can't, they don't have an education, they can't work. So what happens? They become prostitutes. So now you don't just have boys spreading it now because they want all kinds of girls, because they're boasting they're such great, wonderful guys, you know, big, such great athletes. Yeah. So what happens? You got the girls now down here. So if there's three million boys, how many are they going to affect? Three million girls, how many are they going to affect? And now they claim there's 40 million people in the world with AIDS. In my books, that's a laugh. They don't even begin to have a count. And the nations have hid their problems for years and for years and for years. And so what you got here is a growing density of a population, plus the fact it is well known that as soon as the mosquitoes can develop an enzyme, and they will, they will pass the AIDS virus on, and it is claimed that it's being done now by different authors and different writers. The whole thing is a cover-up. Why? And I'll tell you why. And I read it to you right here. And it says here, who knowing the judgment of God, 90% Americans are Christians. And they got the money. And they run the world. And the world looks up to America, especially Hollywood, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, and not only do the same, but have pleasure in them to do them. <clears throat> now listen to me. Brother John gave me a little article that came out from England. In there it says that Morris Sorella, the channel that he was on, because he spoke against homosexuals and gays, and supposed to run them down, which God knows they should be run down, because the Bible does it. They, gave, they, they fined the station 20,000 pounds, which is over $30,000. <clears> and they are forbidden to read the first chapter of Romans <clears throat> over the air. You say, well, that's, that's Britain, not America. Hold your sweet little thoughts, my dear brother, my sister, because it is America. The FCC has already passed that any religious station must now cut down and give 50% airtime to some other junk. And they're fighting it right now in Congress. And my question is this, with freedom of speech in America, how come any bureaucrat dares to do this with the FCC without having his head chopped off? Where are the lawyers? Where are, the, where are our servants, the senators and the congressmen? <clears throat> where are our judges? Ah, we believe in God. Yeah, you sure do. Just exactly what it says here in the book. 
<clears throat> now, what is this talk all about? What am I trying to get to you? I'm trying to get to you this. It all starts with Godhead. Huh? Oh, no, Brother Vail. Oh, no, but no, Brother Vail's wrong. Yeah, 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 I know. Brother Vail's always wrong. The Bible's always wrong. The prophet is always wrong. Yeah, the prophet, God's always wrong. God's never right. <clears throat> Even the Sanhedrin said, we are so smart that when God has difficulty, he calls on us. <clears throat> How many priests did God call on? How many preachers? How many anything? How many Mohammedans? God never called on anybody <clears throat> because he stands in violet and all alone. <clears throat> so here is the situation <clears throat> that we have <clears throat> that began when Eve and Adam knew God. And they held the truth in unrighteousness. She got be from behind the word and took Adam with her. <clears throat> they did the very thing that Satan did and Satan's kingdom is right here and right now because the devils know there is one God and tremble and his servants know there is one God though they try to make him Trinity and Tunis and heaven knows what that they that commit such things are worthy of death the judgment of God <clears throat> and destruction they know it but they do the same just like in the beginning, have pleasure in them to do it, <clears throat> in the white community of preachers. Not one to my knowledge stood up like my black brethren in Dayton, and yet the whites don't seem to have much use for the blacks. Maybe it better be the other way around, the blacks don't have much use for the whites. Because except for the pressure put on by them, Ryan McClinton was going along with Miss Weissman and the rest of them. And they said, just a minute. You are not going to get us to turn on God and we're going to tell you right to your face. There's an election coming up. I don't say you should mix politics with religion, but I'll tell you one thing. If you don't have true religion, what good are your stinking politics? <clears throat> No politician can make a true decision. And who puts the judges in? The politicians. So the judges are like the politicians. <clears throat> oh yes, Mr. Gore has already said, I'll give the ass a test right now. They got to believe in Rowan Wade. And he and his wife were the great Christians that Dr. Dobson had on the string. Yeah, the natural use of the woman to pro provide a baby, what does she do? She kills it. Yeah. And everybody takes pleasure in it. Yep. She's a murderer. Everybody says, that's right, right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's good. And you know who stood up the hardest <clears throat> against them all? Alan Keyes, the black man. He beat the spots off of all the white men put together. Except in my books, he did make one mistake. And I don't believe for one minute a woman rape has to bear a baby. And the scripture I use for it is by inference. And that is when the woman who was, who was supposed to, like one of Jacob's daughters, <clears throat> her sons was supposed to, it wasn't Jacob, it was Reuben or one of them. His daughter, his son was, uh, his daughter-in-law, uh, her husband died. And he gave the son Onan, he spilt the seed in the ground. And he wouldn't give Sheila, so she went out and she just put the widow's veil on. And she stood in the, in the in this, and her father-in-law came by. Oh, there's a prostitute here, might as well avail myself of the prostitute. So he goes in, avails herself of her services, and uh, he, what do you want for your service? She said, give me a kid. Well, she said, I don't have that. Well, then give me your, your signet and your cane, and then bring the kid by tomorrow or tonight. He said, I'll do that. So he sent the servant by to give her the kid for the price of the prostitute. And so, well, there's nobody down there that's a prostitute. Nobody even heard of one. 
Well, he said, that's funny. He said, well, anyway, he said, I guess put the kid back in the pasture, but my signet and my cane is gone. And then the daughter-in-law turns up pregnant. And they say, oh, your daughter-in-law's pregnant. He says, bring her out and burn her at the stake. Now, if they'd have burned her at the stake, would the baby have come out? Now, by inference, I'm not teaching you, thus saith the Lord. I don't know what Brother Branham would say. <clears throat> but I cannot believe for one minute, according to the scripture, that a woman raped should have a baby. Unless they kill the man. Or oh, said, she'd been more righteous than I. <laughs> Yeah, adultery. <laughs> you know something? That's in God's record here for thousands of years what that bird did. I don't care if he was the son of David. I don't care if he's elect. And God doesn't care either what a man sows he reaps. And how you and I treat God and treat his word, we're going to answer for it and don't think we won't. And, and everyone who is sitting here knows it to be the truth. Every man, woman, and child, you know in your heart and from experience, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth and you know it. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And if you sow to the devil's wisdom, which is sin, truth, and earthy, Instead of that which cometh from above, which is the word of the living God, you will reap exactly that. But remember this one thing. The devil's lie dies because it has no power and authority. But the word of God endures forever. And his word which he sent forth will never return unto him void. That means every word he sows in you and me and we sow back to God will go back to him with the full benefits of Almighty God himself. We are on the winning side tonight, brother and sister. We're not on the losing side. We are on the positive side. And I want you to see all of these things that seem to be against us. <clears throat> they are for us. And these are the things that I'm talking about the world is embracing. And we may have this church set down for the very things I said. They may kill me for what I've said. But I'm going to tell you, I can't change. And if I was willing and I was willing to give my life for Brother Branham, and God knows I am telling you the truth, then I certainly can give my life for God and his word. Yes. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be difficult. That's be the thing to do. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you at the end of this service here, <clears throat> having laid our foundation, our preliminary, Lord, for tomorrow, if so be, we should come together. Thanking you now for the help you give us to declare these things and bring things to our mind which we need to know. At least I felt we should need to know because you brought them to my mind. And share them with the people, Father, for one reason only, and that is because it is the Word. And that's the only purpose there is because it is the word and it will not return void but it will accomplish what we're going to be sent in help us therefore Lord now to be very very sincere and very very careful concerning the lives which we live because every man must give account of the deeds done in the flesh whether good or of evil and receive a reward therefrom help us Lord to be like Moses and those heroes of faith who esteem the riches of God a treasure incomparable cannot be compared no matter how good the other things look. The treasures of Egypt, the treasures of Babylon, the treasures of today, everything wide and loose there for the taking, creating fortunes, anything, Lord, it just isn't worth it. If we've ever been serious before, Lord, or not been enough, I pray from this time on, will be more and more serious as you give these things thought. So the very serious nature of this word becomes our nature. And you become our true and living God, where we might worship you in spirit and in truth. And live those lives, Lord, to do even as the prophet said, always want to please you. May that be our aim tonight in life and all the days that are given us to live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to turn to the scripture now and read over here as we... <clears throat> Find a little scripture, and uh, <clears throat> now going to the 13th chapter of John, uh, we have the foot washing scene there, where 
Peter misunderstood what Jesus was doing and uh, Jesus said in verse 10, He that is washed needeth not save to wash feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. <clears throat> now, you notice in there that, that uh, Jesus had not yet shed his blood, but the blood would be shed, and yet they were clean. Even as John said, the seed of God cannot sin because uh, a real, truly born-again child can't sin because his seed remaineth in him, <clears throat> and he cannot sin because he is born of God. And the fact of the matter is we're talking about the seed that comes down through natural generation, though it in itself is supernatural, being a part of God. And I, I take that to be the soul because I couldn't get any other thought from it than what Brother Branham said. Uh, so, <clears throat> and from the scripture, especially the soul being on the inside, uh, and remember, it was the soul of Jesus that went down to Hades. The spirit went back to God. So the spirit being allowed of God and the soul being of God make that two different things. So he said, uh, this one here was not clean, and there's no way that Judas could be clean <clears throat> at all. So after he'd <clears throat> washed their feet and taken his garments, was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And if verily I said, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that sent greater than he that sent him. <clears throat> now, see, there again he's, uh, he's lining up the church. Like it says, uh, uh, here, here's the woman. The head of the woman is man, the head of man is Christ, the head of Christ is God. And he's telling them here, he said, uh, the servant is not greater than his Lord, and the Jesus is Lord of that group of disciples. He, he certainly is. Then he said, neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So he's letting them know that he is not as great as God. He's not as great, he's not greater. <clears throat> so he's under God, as the scripture said. It says the head of man is the head of man is Christ, the head of Christ is God. And so you, you have to see that God is supreme. In fact, that's what the word God means, deity, <laughs> which means sovereign. He does what he wants, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it, and nobody can say anything about it. And if he's not what he says he is, which is a God of love, we're in trouble. He's just a capricious God. And nobody knows. But you see, the very fact that he's made himself so absolutely <clears throat> uh, available and so absolutely revealed proves that he's a God of love, that he is love. So God's in three. Now, I speak not, no, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Well, happy are you why? Number, it, not just the foot washing, is the recognition of authority <clears throat> and come under it. See, that's what he's talking about. Jesus thoroughly came under God, and God was thoroughly manifest in him and through him. Now, Christ wants to be thoroughly manifest in and through the church, so the church can be living epistles read and known of all men. But how do you do it? You come under the authority of God. Now, the only authority of God that God has is the revealed word, <clears throat> and this is a difficult thing because the Bible tells us even the prophets prophesying at times did not know what they were prophesying. It had to come to pass. Now, we had William Branham come and tell us those things we needed to know, which are so tremendous, he went right back into eternity to describe and tell us the very things that Paul told us, just barely as a shadow, even as Paul said it was known the Gentiles should come in, it was already known prophesied, but it's not known as it's known now because the Gentiles were come in because God had revealed his word by interpreting it <clears throat> or, or inter interpreting the word by, by bringing it to pass. <clears throat> so we're looking at this tonight and we can see that if we line up with the word as taught to us in this hour, we're right back to Ephesus and that means rapture because 
That's what the first chapter of Ephesus, Ephesians is all about. <clears throat> from eternity to eternity. From when God started with his purpose to when he ended it with a bride in the new Jerusalem. Now, he's got other purposes, that's fine. I don't know, I'm not going to argue that point or talk about it. All I know is that that's for us. I speak not of you all, I knew whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me <coughs> have lifted up his heel against me. Now the point is, how could Judas lift up his heel against Jesus unless he had the intimate connection <coughs> that he had? And that's what we look at too with this message. Uh, how in the world could there possibly be problems except problems that come from association? I don't believe for one minute that the world's the least bit interested in you and me. Oh, once in a while they call us a bunch of uh, idiots and a, and a sect and a few things like that, and they accuse Brother Branham of believing in abortion <clears throat> because Brother Branham didn't say what, what Mr. Uh, Clinton did. Mr. Clinton said that, that the baby has life when it breathes because uh, the word spirit is the same word in, in the Greek and the Hebrew for air or breathing. So if the baby doesn't breathe, it's not alive. Well, Brother Branham didn't say that. Brother Branham said it's just kicking muscles and nerves, <clears throat> and the body itself hasn't come until the spirit comes into it. He didn't call it a breath at all. He called it a spirit, which stood there waiting to receive the baby. And then he told the Mormon man, whose baby was born, uh, 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 stillborn, never came forth with life at all to breathe, he said, you see that baby in heaven. Why? Because the soul was there. You see, the, 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 so what happens, the spirit leaves and the soul stays. If you die, first thing is the spirit goes, into thy hands I commend my spirit. What went first? The spirit left Jesus. Then what happened? The soul went down to Hades. So when Brother Branham told a certain man, his name was, uh, uh, what was his name, you know, uh, Way, Edmund Way. He said, I, he said to Brother Branham, he said, I don't remember it being dying. Remember what well, he said? That's because he said the spirit goes and the soul lingers. I'm sure that's the words he said. <clears throat> but you can go to the Bible and find that for yourself. In thy hands I commend my spirit. So if he commend his spirit, the spirit went back to God. And where did the soul go? And then the soul went down to Hades. <clears throat> went down there. So what was, the, what was the real person? The real person was the soul. That was Jesus. That was that. And he was that real person, which was a part of God. When God breathed Adam the breath of lives, he became a living soul. He wasn't before. So the Holy Spirit, a little bit, a little life in there is Holy Spirit. And that's that seed that God breathes upon, uniting it back to him. And, and it hasn't to do with the soul. It wasn't the soul that sinned. It was the flesh. <clears throat> You'll find Brother Branham tells you all those things. It was that went into degradation. So the, soul, the, so the body goes into death and then comes back in a resurrection later on. So the point is here, who would be the, who would be the ones that, that become your enemies? And what did Paul say? He said, I tell you even now weeping that those who are once my friends have become the enemy of the cross. And who in the world is going to be the enemy of this message except that those people that thought they saw something and, and like that fellow named Moore out there in uh, <coughs> Arizona. Oh my, he was all great for this and great for that and heaven knows what return ministry. He had everything all lined up and he was about the biggest blowhard I ever heard in my life and he knew everything and then suddenly something comes along. Uh, what was it, 1977 where Brother Branham never said it's got to take place. He just said that, posit that, that it could happen and he said, well, it doesn't look like it's going to be. And he said it was just by reckoning on the fact of, of the, the revelation that God gave him and how fast they were coming to, to be <clears throat> that he thought by 1977. So he turns around and, and then he says every wicked and terrible thing he could say against Brother Branham. Well, the point what I'm driving at is here, the people that do the damage, like what damage can a thief do to your home, uh, you know, in comparison to the thief that's been in your home? So that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> and those that are so friendly with you, and la di da yeah, they're right with it. And all they're doing is waiting for a chance to cut your throat and destroy anything they can do. And that's what Judas did. But Judas was more of a man than these guys. At least he went out and hanged himself. <clears throat> but that's, well, I don't, I don't say they should hang themselves. They've already hung themselves, actually, on the grounds of what they've done because they have been very wrong. And he said, he then that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. And I tell you before that, when it come to pass, ye believe me that I am he. So that, <clears throat> so when you, when you engage in foot washing, it's actually something which is done amongst those that are, that are guests 
and they are part of you, they come into your home, they eat with you and they drink with you, even as in the communion of the table of the Lord, all of these things, but it also shows that there is where you're going to have your difficulty. <clears throat> and the difficulty, no doubt, what comes in the future uh, will have to come, I don't say positively, but what I read here, it shows that uh, as Jesus had a Judas, and Brother Branham said he knew who his were, and uh, I want you to know in Brother Branham's ministry, <clears throat> uh, there was already the homosexuals were rising up, and uh, they were there. It wasn't long afterward, there were more and more of them. And so we find here at the end time now, uh, you're going. I believe that there'll be, uh, who knows, I don't know what's going to happen amongst a lot of people that say they believe this message, but, but from the scripture here, uh, you follow types, it's going to be uh, what I would say a very serious possibility <clears throat> of a great deal of problems coming up because of people who say, look, I, I really, I, I believe Brother Branham, but they don't believe him at all. And they don't believe him because they don't have vindication. So that's enough for tonight. We've taken a lot of time. We have no further time. Let's rise at this time. Then the deacons come forward. <clears throat> and uh, we'll be ready then for the foot washing communion service. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we again we thank you for the privilege of coming to this point of our service tonight when we have foot washing and the partaking of the emblems of the broken body and shed blood, which we know, Lord, has, has been stated by Brother Branham, are reserved for those who are full of the Holy Spirit, baptized in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe, Lord, that that is for those who believe this message who have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when, Lord, they did the first two things, repenting and being baptized, and you, Lord, have done the third, and now piling word upon word, being more and more full of the Spirit of God. So, Father, we believe this is our privilege tonight, and you've told us to do it, and here and we are doing it, examining ourselves, that we do have the right, and we do love the brethren, and we are abstaining, Lord, from the things of the world, also having forgiveness when we failed, knowing that we have a our, an intercessor who comes against our adversary, who pleads our case and keeps us within the fold because we are part of that fold. May your name be glorified in the proceeding of this service. May Christ's name be exalted. May no shame ever come upon you, Lord, or may we not be ever found in disobedience to you and your word, Lord, but we may be the stalwart children of the cross, children of the word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. You just come around from the side there to brethren help you. <clears throat> Take the name of Jesus. Christ.